I'll see the world. Yes, and, and, and you did. So you started with your basic training? At uh, Newport, Rhode Island. And that lasted for about how long? Well, let's say eight weeks. Uh -huh. And you were just learning how to sail the ship? What just you... just uh, basic uh, how to be a sailor. How to be a sailor. Yeah. From the salute was, right on through. There was a lot of things besides sailing the ship involved. There was anywhere from office work to, to uh, ship would be the last thing, although that's where everybody wanted to go. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So you finished that in eight weeks and then you went to? I went to gunnery school. Where was that? That was on, uh, it was off of uh, the beach in New York, yeah, off of the, uh, over the, in, off of the Atlantic Ocean. And they, uh, they towed a, uh, a big balloon, and that's what we shot at for a target. And uh, the bullets were just going out of sight in the ocean, so there wasn't any harm to anyone. Uh, that's about it. And, uh, and that's where you that's got where your I, first injury? Yeah, I had a terrible earache, and the doctor said it was a perforated eardrum. And we didn't have any uh, head pieces to wear or like they do when they mow lawns and things like that today. Uh, it, it, uh, I was right next to a gun that was pretty loud and, and uh, eventually it got me. Was that common for people to... Quite pervert? a few people got it. Well, they, I don't remember anybody that day, but I remember talking about a lot of people had did get it. <laughs> Not at, gunnery, not at gunnery school, but at regular shooting on board the ship. Yeah. So then from from there, where did you go for your next? From there I went to uh, the Armed Guard Center. Well, they, we went to uh, back to the base where we went to boot camp, and then they said, you're, uh, you're going to be in the Armed Guard. We didn't know what the Armed Guard was. We found out shortly that it was uh, a branch of the Navy, but it was completely different. Uh, very strict, and uh, all you did was you were, you were a gunner. You didn't. Uh, well, you, you did a lot. You did the regular Navy routine, but it, but it was more of uh, how to uh, shoot a gun and how to. Aim gun, all that thing. Because you were going to protect civilians, right? On civilian ships. Uh, no, we were actually the ships were carrying cargoes. We were on guard to take care of the cargo. Ah, so it would be like a freighter. Freighter. More like a freighter. Yeah, right. I see. And you did that for for how long? That your whole tour of duty was that, that was type of thing? The whole thing. Well, no, it was at the end of my career in the Navy, they uh, they put me on another ship, and it was a hospital ship. And what what was your duty there? Deckhand. <laughs> yeah. And did you like that? Yes. That's Navy life. That's regular Navy. So you finally got your your chance to do the yeah. regular Navy thing. Right. That's good. So what was your highest rank? Uh, just a coxswain. That was third class boatswain's mate. And uh, let's, do, you, do you remember any specific stories? Any any. Did you have to protect? Did you actually fire on enemy boats? Oh, yeah. We had a... Uh, we went into the invasion of France, D-Day. Oh. We uh, participated in that. We fired our guns at the beach, and people went ashore and got killed. And uh, I never wanted to see that movie, Private Ryan, because 
They claim it's similar to that. And I said, I saw it once, I don't want to see it again. I agree. You know, the guy's floating in the water right below my ship with their uniform on and, and, you know, gone. So, I didn't want to see that movie. No. So, how long, what was the timing of that? How long were you offshore during that? I don't have a clear picture of I, I've seen the movies where they're coming ashore, but... How did long you, did it take? Huh? Yeah. How long were oh. you there? Gee, I would say, uh, I'd be guessing really a little bit, but uh, probably uh, three weeks. Wow. Long time. That's a long time. Well, I'll, I'll tell you briefly. Yeah. The, we had an awful lot of ships that were that came into the harbor with guns, and the Germans were in a bunkers on a side hill, which was all ledge. They had made theirself a place to hide, and they had machine guns. And when our ships would come ashore, as close as they could get, and the ones that carried men on, they, they stood up. We come across the English Channel from uh, uh, the Gulf of. Uh, well, I'll think about that in a minute. But uh, uh, we went. We went ashore. Everybody's firing their guns at the at the beach, trying to knock down the bunkers. Uh, it took two or three days before they could get it off the beach, because everybody was getting killed. One wave would go in, and they'd get mowed right down. So they sent another wave in, and same thing happened. But uh, it might not have been three weeks that we were there, but there was quite a long time that they weren't. They wouldn't dare send two or three more people in because they were able to not make it. Eventually, the shooting sounded more deeper into the woods, you know. Every day was a little bit further away, a little bit further, a little bit further. But uh, we might say instead of three weeks, we might cut it down to two weeks, I guess. It probably seemed like a year. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And then at night, they came over with an airplane and dropped the flare. And uh, the flare would, was on a parachute, and it came down slow. And the Germans were shooting it, and all the ships in the harbor, trying to, you know, knock them out. Didn't work, though. Didn't work. No. We won the thing. Yeah, that was hard fought. That in the Civil War. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, that was at the end, toward the end of the war, right? So you had been in what what ports have you? Okay, we uh, we start the first trip was straight across from New York. We shipped out of New York. They come the Hudson River, right go by the Statue of Liberty. On your way out, you turn around, you look back, and you say, "Oh boy, look at that! I'll never see land again." And it's quite a feeling. Yeah. I mean, I was never on a ship before. Here I am out so far you can hardly see land now. And we kept on going. Uh, and then we hit a storm that first night. It was terrible. Just about everybody got seasick. It was so bad. And sometimes, you know, you can pass on it if, you, if you're lucky. But, uh, so we went to, uh, you go through the uh, Rock of Gibraltar, you go through there and you go get into the Mediterranean Sea. And our stops were all along North Africa. We stopped every little jerk town there was leaving supplies and for the troops and for the people. So we got down to the end. Uh, I made quite a few trips to the uh, through the Mediterranean Sea. I must have we went back home and went back again probably 
seems to me like six times. And uh, the last time is when I got malaria. And uh, we never went on the other side of the uh, of that ocean because that's where Italy and, and uh, Spain and, and those places. The only time I was there was in Palestine. We were coming back from the Indian Ocean, and then I came down with the malaria. So I went ashore, stayed there uh, a week, and uh, the skipper came over to the ship and he said, I got bad news for you. We're leaving tomorrow, and uh, if you want to come, tell me. I said, don't leave me here. Get me out of this place. So uh, sure enough, they gave me a whole bunch of pills to take. And uh, we went across the Atlantic again and dropped me off in New York. And I went to St. Albans, the U.S. Navy Hospital. And I was there uh, three months. But uh, my fingernails, fingers were all bad because every day they'd prick it with a needle. They didn't have the modern things they have today. They would go zoom with a piece of glass and then, then tomorrow and the next day and the next day and, oh. and then uh, every single day. And then they would come along and uh, every night they would give you, uh, this is in New York, this is in St. Albans now. Every day at night they would come along, a nurse would come along with a tray with little shot glasses of something that tasted good but it made your heart beat faster. It was some kind of booze. I don't know just what it was. But uh, it did taste good anyway. Uh, so they uh, they would go along and give everybody that drink. Right behind her was another nurse with a telescope. And she would look down at the... She'd take and put it on two pieces of glass <coughs> and take a, a smear of it and look at it. And, uh, and if you had malaria, it would be moving. And if the malaria was ceased, it would it would uh, it would move. So uh, that was quite quite something. Did you have any people say that it comes back? Did you oh ever, yeah. Did it come back? I still get it. You still get it. Yeah. That's I can't I give blood, you know. What? I can't give blood to anybody. No, they don't want yours. No, well, the doctor's got it written somewhere in my records that I can't donate. I couldn't, you know, if you went to a blood bank or yeah. something. No. So now, how often has it come back? Well, I'll tell you, when I, when I got out of the Navy, uh, my wife and I used to go uh, square dancing up the Pine Meadow Firehouse, take the trucks out and the square dance every <coughs> Saturday night. And uh, we'd have a couple of drinks. It was square dance, and I would go home and I'd have an attack. My, I would, I would shiver and shake and freezing and sweating, all at once, and uh, sick to your stomach. That lasted, uh, well, that lasted a couple of years, and uh, now every once in a while I, I get something. Now one of my family doctors, I won't mention his name. Uh, said, I bet your money that you can trace that your problem, which you've got, nobody seems to know. He said, I bet your money that you can trace that back to malaria. That's his opinion. So you got two things that you've had all the rest of your life. Not, that didn't get better, that didn't go away. I mean, That's right. Amazing. Amazing. Um, did you, do you still know any of your buddies from the Navy? Because you're all confined on this ship. Oh, they're all gone. They're all gone? When I was, uh, well, I mean, they're all disappeared. I don't know. Uh, when I, I went to uh, school, <coughs> my father sent me to school out in uh, 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 Michigan, Flint, Michigan. I went to General Motors School. So my father and mother came to visit me when I was out there. So I'm walking down a sidewalk, and, and uh, a guy walked by and he says, got halfway by and he says, hey, sailor. That's what we used to call each other if he didn't know his name. 
And he sailed, so I turned around in the back and talked to him. He was on board one of the ships, and uh, he lived out there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, some of these, are they're finding their families through the photos that are, that are involved in this project. Um, did you have anything you did especially for good luck purposes? Did you have anything you brought from home or...? Well, every place we went, we bought souvenirs from the natives and from uh, uh, anywhere we could get them, bring them home, and gave them to my mother. And when I got married, I, t I said, no, I'm going to give all these to my wife. No, you're not. You're not touching any of those. <laughs> she wouldn't let, but I finally got them. But it you took had a while. to wait your turn to get yeah. them back. Yes, yeah. I, I agree with your mother. Um, now, you still have them all. Yeah, well, they kind of disappeared a little bit. I had some black ebony, black ebony, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, camel, uh, uh, you know, uh, and it happened in the circus uh, elephants. Oh, yeah. And they were all little ones. They were like from this big to <coughs> this big and this big and this big, uh, homemade. And, and uh, I bought the set of them. And uh, I still have those. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. I collect elephants, so I, I can understand that. Uh, now, did you did you have shore leaves so that you could go and, and see places? I had shore leaves, yeah. And uh, was there any fun places that you got to have shore leaves? Uh, well, you had a regular time that you were supposed to get off, but it depends on the schedule of the ship. But when I was in the hospital in uh, St. Albans, uh, after I was there so long, and they tested me, and I didn't test uh, positive, they said, you can go ashore now. And then going ashore means uh, if you're in a hospital, it's the same thing as being on a ship. If you were on a ship and you want your liberty, you can go ashore. Yeah. Well, if you're on a hospital, same thing, go ashore. So uh, Subway went right by the place, went to New York City. So uh, I asked somebody in New York City, uh, uh, what's, you know, what's the do here? I've never been here before. So he said, uh, well, if you like to roller skate, there's a nice roller skating rink. So I started going there, and I even met this girl that I got real friendly with. Uh -huh. and, uh, well, that didn't end up with anything, but uh, that was what I did. Every time I went ashore, it was, it was roller skating. That's fun. Did, uh, did the sailors play pranks? What did you do for amusement while you're on the ship for these long periods of time? Well, most of the guys played cards, but I never got involved in playing cards. But I was into making belts. Uh, Belfast cord, you ever heard of that? No. It's, uh, you buy it in New York City in uh, hobby shops. I, you can get it around here probably. Is that the weaving one? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have to Draw bury, hide? Yeah. You can make them either this wide or, or wider if you want it. But I, I did that. And I've got three or four at home that I, let's see, I don't have one out now. No. Um, you said you you didn't get any medals, but you did get a lot of ribbons. A lot of ribbons. Yeah. A lot of ribbons. That's good. Um, how did you communicate with your family? Why didn't I? No. How did you? Just letters. Yes, just letters. Back, back. Everything was censored during the war. Came with little out, cutouts. Yeah. Yeah, they cut a piece out. If. If I sent a letter home, when they got it, it was cut out. But when I got their letter, it was cut out too. And that ruined everything, you know, because you told them where you were, and they didn't, the government didn't want they didn't anybody to know that. Yeah, we had a lot of letters from my father like that, where they were sent. I can tell you one quick story. Good. When I was in the hospital, uh, after your there a while you can get up and walk around just like any place 
but uh, what, and there's a phone on outside each ward, and our ward was about 50, never 50 guys in there with malaria, so it was a big ward. But uh, if you're walking down the aisle and the phone rings, you're supposed to answer, that's a rule. So one day the phone rang and uh, somebody yelled, they picked their head in the door and said, phone call for Bill Bristol. So I said to myself, what, who the heck knows? Nobody knows I'm here. What, what's that all about? So uh, I went and answered it, and it was a girl. And she says, uh, you don't know me, but I know you. I was talking to you yesterday. She came in with a girlfriend, with her boyfriend, to see the guy next to me. And she read my chart on the bottom of the bed. And she got my father and mother's name and telephone number. And she had the nerve to call up my mother and say, I just talked to his son, he's in the hospital. Don't you believe she went nuts? That was oh. awful. Oh, yeah. I, I, and you uh, hadn't told her anything about it? No. 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 In fact, I didn't didn't even uh, have sent a letter out or anything. No. But now, malaria, you can't catch it directly from you unless you donated blood or something, something like right, that. Right, right. It doesn't, it's not contagious. No. In the <coughs> now, have you kept in touch with the, with the veterans groups? Have I done what? Have you kept in touch and joined the veterans groups from World War II? And no. I didn't think so. I remember Art Lowell marching and people, that, but I yeah. don't remember you. Yeah. So um, now, did you when you 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 went directly from high school, then you went to General Motors training school? Was that covered by the GI Bill? Yes. Yeah. See, so that was good. Yeah, that was good. Everybody that I talked to, that was the the good result at the end was that they got their education paid for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you chose General Motors because of your dad being right. in the business. Right. And you knew you were going to be in the business. Right. Family thing. Uh, so you didn't go to reunions or... No. no. I had a chance to, but I, I never went. I, I'm sort of like that myself. I'm not very good about reunions. Um, now, are there any stories that we, we haven't talked about? Have we got... Do you have any funny stories? Didn't they play pranks on the ship ever? Well, when you were crossing a pointer, and you know where that is, Yeah. Uh, they initiate you just like when you're going through high school. And, and what do they do to you? Well, they're liable to do anything. Uh, bad things, you know. What did One they do to you? put a line on them and threw them overboard and towed them for a while, just enough to scare them to death. Yeah. But uh, usually it was small things, like, kind of like they do in high school. You know, put an egg in your hair and different things. And I have a plaque at home on the window around the wall, it's about that square. It says, uh, you've crossed the equator, and now you're a showback. You're a polywog to begin with. And after you go over across the equator, you're a showback. So the next time you go across, there's nothing involved, you know, but they... They, the guys that are that have been across, they like to pounce on these new guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was was fun for them, I guess. So you didn't get a hot foot or any of that stuff. No. Yeah. So the, not too bad pranks, just fun stuff. Yeah, fun things. Gambling. Oh, I never gambled. So, um, any other stories that you'd like to tell us? Oh, yes, you have to tell us about the hospital ship. And you have to tell us about um, bringing the Pearl Harbor men okay. back. Okay, the hospital ship was the, was the one we brought the men back on. Okay, I, I, was, uh, I was out of the hospital, and they shipped me down to uh, uh, Okinawa, I guess it was. And I was there for a while, and they finally said, you're going to be, you're going to, we've got a ship waiting for you. 
So it did come in for a couple of weeks. And I kept saying, oh boy, I wonder if the river is coming, you know. And uh, because that island was still had Japs on it. And they were fighting them in the chow line even. They were snicking oh. down trying to get something to eat because they're starving to death. Oh. But uh, anyway, this ship came in finally and it was a big white ship. And it said uh, USS, U.S. Navy and a hospital. So uh, I went on uh, and I was a deckhand, just a regular deckhand, but the ship was big. Uh, on the Mercer Marine ships, we, we had uh, 20 men all together. Uh, the other guys were all uh, uh, regular uh, regular civilians, they really, when you come right down to it. Every time I had a air raid attack <coughs> or a submarine attack, they got paid for it. And we didn't get anything except to say, oh, it's tough. But, uh, uh, so these were all wounded people you were putting on the hospital ship? Yeah. Well, no, uh, the hospital ship was for that. But uh, when the war was over, we brought everybody on the island home. Uh, they, everybody uh, congregated on Pearl Harbor down Pacific people. And everybody that was shipped to the Pacific to do duty, they had to have a way home. So that's what they did. They had a, a magic carton, you know, magic, magic car carpet was a nickname for it. They had a name for everything. Oh, yeah. And uh, so uh, I was being on a deck, deck force. I was involved in all the use, use of the small boats. Uh, overhead we had, uh, like if you're looking at a good-sized ship, they have these uh, lifeboats, you know, all over, all over the place. But on, on this ship, they had lifeboats plus four Liberty launches. And they were one on each side in the bow and one on each side of the stern, hung up high. And uh, you had to use a block and tackle, block and tackle to get them down. And uh, when we went ashore with these people, we, we, we took a uh, lowered one down, brought her alongside the ship, and uh, people went down. Got on. We had to go ashore the first first trip, we had to go ashore and pick, pick them up. And, and the Liberty launch would be loose now, and it was floating by itself. And so we, uh, we took the women home first, wax and waves. And there were two full trips, and I don't know how many on each trip, but it, it, we made seven trips, and it took it took five days each way. So that took a lot of time. So we couldn't get discharged until we were all done with that. We weren't the only ship, but I don't know how many there was. You never saw the other ones, you know. You might pass them, but you didn't know. <coughs> we went under the Brooklyn Bridge or the, not the, the Golden Gate Bridge, and that was the most beautiful sight. It's always foggy and uh, hazy, and when and you, uh, a regular ship, even in Connecticut, it's the same thing. A big ship can't go into a harbor without a pilot, and a pilot is uh, separate from the service. He's got his own job. And uh, so what you'd see is uh, all of a sudden, here's our ship's coming in, in the fog. You look over on the right-hand side, and uh, here's, a, here's a big, great big sailboat towing a little dinghy behind it, coming closer and closer. And when it get real close, we lowered the gangway down, and then come alongside, and one guy was, had a pair of oars, and he was rolling. He just got off of this other boat, so he could uh, let this guy get on our on our ship, you know. So, so uh, that was very interesting. So it wasn't like a tugboat. He actually got on and piloted the ship. Yeah. Wow. Well, he got on our ship and went up right up to the captain's room, and uh, he took over. He tells the captain's stand aside. <coughs> I'm in charge here now. I didn't know they did that. That's oh, amazing. yeah. yeah.
Yeah. They made seven trips, so when you finally were discharged, what what year and month was that? Let's see. Uh, I don't even know what year it was. But well, you were thinking it was 46, 1946. And I think you thought it was somewhere in the summertime, not, not July or August, maybe. Yeah, August, I think it was. August. So you were hospitalized in New York City, and you were hospitalized in Palestine, and you weren't hospitalized anywhere else. No. Well, that's good. Yeah, right. That's good. Is there anything you'd like to add to this? Any stories you'd like to tell? Well, I got rolled once, but that's normal. What do you mean you got rolled? Uh, you were attacked, you mean? Yeah. On the ship? No, oh. out in New York City. Well, what happened? Two guys jumped me and took my took my watch off, took my wallet out, and beat me up. So I had a big zinger up here. I had to put my hat over it like that so nobody would see it. <laughs> I went home that way too and took all my money. So um, I got, I borrowed some money. Now what did I do? I, our ship was stationed on Staten Island. And uh, you had to take the ferry to get from New York to Staten Island and the same thing coming back. So I'm in New York now and I had to get over to uh, Staten Island. So I'm walking down a, this, a steep hill. I don't know if you've ever been down there, but it's kind of a steep hill going down to the water. And I'm walking along with a whole crowd of people. So you feel brave once in a while. So I, said, I felt brave and I said, the guy next to me, hey buddy, could you lend me a quarter? I gotta get on this ferry out here, down here to to make it over to my ship. The guy looked at me and he says, here's two bucks. He says, it's gonna cost you more than a quarter. So uh, it was a quarter, but it was a quarter each way. You know. So anyway, he gave me a couple bucks, and I I went home. I went on the ferry. I got over there. I took the bus. That's, a, that's why I spent the money. There. There's a bus that goes from there to our ship. There's a bunch of ships. There's, there must have been 50 ships that were parked there alongside the, where, where the water is. And uh, so I got down to where the gate is. There was two USP men, and just like cops. And they said, uh, where, where you, where's your ID? My ID was in my wallet, so that's not there. So uh, the guy said, "Well, you're you're going to have it tough now." He said, "We're going to bring you. We got to bring you in to the captain." So one guy stayed there, and one guy took me into the captain. And the gangway was down. They'd leave it down when they're in the port like that. Brought me up to the captain. The captain was in his office. He said, uh, "Wonder all about it." And he says, "You know, it's your fault." Your fault. You shouldn't let it happen. It never happened again. I was ready, walking down the sidewalk with my hands like this. You know, anybody tried to get a, get you, hit them first. But uh, oh, it was tough. That happened a lot. So anyway, I had to sleep in a brig that night. The next day, I wired some. I wired home to get some money. <laughs> told my folks what happened. They sent me some money, so I got home and then sent me back with some more money, you know. I only stayed home by a couple of days. Well, they, how did you get your ID back and your money? Oh, I had to go through a lot of rigmarole for that. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So the captain wasn't sympathetic? It no, was your no. fault? No. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, anything else? I like these stories. Um, you learned a lot as a kid, didn't you? Huh? The kid that went in at 18 was pretty smart by the time he got out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. Well, I thank you very much, Jenna John or Jim.
Was all that written or recorded? Or? Oh well. You're going to get a DVD. You're going to be able to put it in and watch it. Oh well. That's thanks to this gentleman.